Hello guys, S2W here as your average consumer. This month of February in 2017 is a hectic month of crazy shoe releases. Just this past weekend prior to this video's upload date, Yeezy season began and ended as swiftly as it happened. Today, I have a review of the newest colorway of the Yeezy Boost 350 V2s in the black and red colorway, short for the Breads or also known as the V2 Pirate Blacks. If you did not know, I live in Toronto, Ontario of Canada and I'm lucking out right now. I literally entered all raffles available in Toronto, but for some reason, it felt like it was more difficult to cop size 11s and upwards this time around. I honestly have not seen a lot of people selling size 11s or bigger, and even though I got this pair, it was only because of a very helpful lady friend that got my pair online via Adidas Canada during the afternoon relaunch. It was her first time in queue, so I'm pretty shocked about how she went through while I'm still stuck at the loading screen basically for both launches. Online in Adidas Canada, there was only around 600 pairs and only 30 of them were size 11, so I am very thankful for her assist. If you didn't know, the Yeezy Boost line was created by Adidas with recording artist, songwriter, record producer, and fashion designer Kanye West. Adidas called these the V2s because they are the second and updated model from the Yeezy Boost 350 line. These V2 bread or pirate blacks are the newest member of the V2 line with a new silhouette, separating itself from the initial design launch of the V2 Belugas and all the Shripe 350 V2 launches within the last 3 months before this video's upload date. As I've mentioned, these are also called the V2 pirate blacks and it's for a reason that I'll talk about later. Now much like all the previous 350 V2s, the box looked pretty much the same as the previous V2 models. It's like a sneaker drawer where you have to pull the shoes out, and inside the box, you'll see not only the shoes of course, but shoe paper that feels like wax paper. Taking a closer look at these Yeezy Boost 350 V2 breads, all I can say is, they look simplistically beautiful. To me, they have this minimalistic vibe shown with a straight up only black color on its full prime knit upper, which is Adidas's top of the line fabric material popular for its lightness, breathability, and stretchy properties. On the medial side, nothing much is needed to explain the look of the shoe because they are all in black. Only when you have them in front of you, then you can feel the rough but sturdy texture of the knitting technology of this upper, much like the previous 350 V2s. However, color wise, it lives to its name as core black, as is literally pitch black with one color, and you cannot see any other speckle of shades or outlines here. Whereas on the other striped V2s, you will see many tiny color speckles that make up the faint wavy pattern on this side. On the lateral side, the only color you'll see here other than the black is the red color text that read SPLY-350, mirrored and backwards. In fact, this reverse design is seen on both lateral side of this model, whereas on the belugas, text could be read normally on both shoes. While on the striped V2s, one shoe has regular text, while the other has it backwards. Now back to the V2 Pirate Blacks. If we look carefully enough, or push the knit outwards a bit, you can actually see many speckled dots in between the text here on this V2 Pirate Blacks, a very subtle and unexpected design. Also if you look closely, you can actually see the shape of a stripe, but since it blends in so well with its pitch black color, you'll hardly notice them because you'll look at the red text first anyways. Looking at the toe box, you will continue to see this crisscross configuration stitching that runs upward towards the tip of the high resting tongue of the shoe, a staple look to the Yeezy Boost 350 since the V1s. As for the laces, this Yeezy came with black rope laces that complements the tone of this pitch black colorway, basically blending the shoe together very well. Now for legit checks on this pair, visually, it's going to be much harder because there are less detailing on this silhouette, specifically the missing little arrowheads found on all previous stripe V2s. There is no stripe here to verify if it's supposed to end or dissolve at a certain spot, and because this silhouette went for visual simplicity, it's not that hard to replicate as there's really no design to replicate besides the dark weaving pattern that not a lot of people can clearly inspect anyways, so buy resell with caution. At the back of the shoe lies the most unique and newest design element to the V2 family. They incorporated the pull tab design from the first version of the 350s to this model. None of the previous V2s have this design and this is the first V2 to have this, with multiple streaks of horizontal line running at the middle of this tab. The tab design scheme looks exactly like the colorway of the 350 Pirate Blacks, hence the reason why people are also calling this the V2 Pirate Blacks. 
So just a small pet peeve, don't confuse this as a Pirate Black V2s as this name is already taken by the second release of the Pirate Black V1 model. So call these the V2 Pirate Blacks. Between all the black colored Yeezy Boost 350 V2s so far, nothing much has changed at the missile. They still continue to use the black translucent and flexible rubbery plastic encasement that protects the boost midsole, Adidas' most comfortable cushioning technology. This encasement has the same vertical ribbings running at the surface, offering a very nice yet aggressive touch to the design. Flipping the shoes over, you will see a few boost windows that allow the boost material to expand and contract in order to activate the response of the bouncy boost technology when there's impact against the floor. These 350V2 continue to use full length boost, which you can see starting near the heel of the shoe with 3 stripe pattern dots. On my pair, it's in the line configuration. However, from previously released pairs that I've seen, don't be surprised if you have a pair with dots in a cross configuration. At the heel area of the outsole, the word boost is engraved into the rubber, while the word adidas and the trayfoil logo is located at the tip of the outsole for that extra branding. Inside the heel area of the sneaker, you can see the same adidas 3 stripes running down towards the midsole, much like the previous V2s. Angle collar is again padded around the heel area for further comfort, heel rest with high end quality material. Inside the shoe, removable insoles come with this model. The insoles have Adidas' logo and the word Yeezy in white. On the underside of the insole, there's these unique patterns following the design on the previous 350 insoles. It's a very secretive design that a normal person wouldn't notice unless you need to take the insoles out for a specific reason. Under the prime knit upper, you will see patches of suede surrounding the lace holes to give supporting strength to the delicate fabric as we tighten up the laces. And much like other V2s, there is a piece of thin synthetic fiber running parallel to the famous stitching dead center above the shoe, most likely to prevent the rougher weaving here from rubbing against the dorsal area of our feet. On the inner lateral side, you will see additional designs, basically the inverse color of the outside with the SPLY-350 text in black and because you're reading it from the inside, you can read it normally. At the forefoot area, there is an inner caging system under the prime knit, adding structure to the knit material at the front part of the shoe. And because of this cage, the shoe does fit more snug forefoot wise. However, this inner cage does not extend to the midfoot area, so this part of the prime knit will feel stretchy to an extent much like the sock fitting prime knits on an NND or Ultra Boost. Anyways, here are some Yeezy 350V2 Pirate Black or Bread Fit footages. Fit wise personally, they still fit similar to all my other 350V2s. If you have wide feet like me, go up at least half a size. They fit very tight at the forefoot with the inner cage. Narrow feet, it's possible you can go true to size but do more sizing research if I were you to make sure. Something to note here is that for some reason, these V2 Pirate Blacks have slightly wider heel area for me. It's not as constricting as the previous 350V2s near the ankle area of my feet. Comfort wise, the boost material will compress more than the current NMDs that are out and comes close to the squishiness of the popular Ultra Boosts. But because the V2s fit tight on the upper, this is the case where the upper prevails and Ultra Boosts are still more comfortable and free forming around the feet. This 350V2 is $300 Canadian at retail before tax and as I've mentioned before, it's a price that many won't shell out easily unless you're into sneakers or a fan of Kanye West. But thankfully, they are really comfortable cushioning wise. In my opinion, even though there's not much design elements to this new model and might be potentially the easiest model to replicate, to me, this total black upper looks the most versatile as a fashion item out of the rest of the V2 currently released. Not a lot of people like the pull tab, but I'm actually content that they took out the stripe this time around as every Yeezy right now just seems like a simple rinse and repeat. As always, throw me some likes if you liked the video and let me know in the comments where you rank these V2 Pirate Blacks from the 350V2 line. Currently, I would definitely place these in my top 3 for sure. That's it for today, S2W signing off.